Who would have thought that there would be a discovery like this? A new supercharged type of gold? I'll explain as we explore. Yeah, gold, the metal that you see here, comes in a variety of different forms and alloys. It's pretty amazing how different even 24 karat gold uh, pieces look when compared next to each other. But nonetheless, gold does have that distinctive hue to it. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in this video as well too. But I'm gonna be referencing a piece here from fizz.org about striking rare new gold that has been unveiled. It's a material infused with gold in an exotic chemical state. For the first time, Stanford researchers have found a way to create and stabilize an extremely rare form of gold that has lost two negatively charged electrons. It's denoted AU2+. How's that for the new acronym out there? And you know, that's, this is the one that I think is much more exciting and much more potentially valuable and useful to society. The material stabilizing this elusive version of the valued element is a halide perosvakite, a class of crystalline materials that holds great promise for various applications, which includes even more efficient solar cells, light sources, and electronics components. Now that's the thing, it's about utilizing gold uh, in in everyday society. You know, we talk about how silver being the, being the most diverse metal in terms of usage uh, across the spectrum of science, technology, and industry. But gold really should not be understated as far as how uh, efficient and how it can be utilized. And this is one of those discoveries that is quite intriguing, I believe. The AU2 plus perovskite is also quick and simple to make, apparently using off-the-shelf ingredients at room temperature. I'll get into that. It would be surprised at what one of those ingredients are, by the way, as we explore this particular story. Uh, it was a real surprise that we were able to synthesize a stable material containing AU plus, two plus. I didn't even believe it at first, according to um, Hamamala Karundasa, associate professor at, of chemistry at Stanford School of Humanities and Sciences, and senior author of the study that was published in Natural Chemistry last month. Creating the first of its kind, AU2 plus perovskite is exciting. The gold atoms in the perovskite bear strong similarities to copper atoms in high temperature semiconductors. Yeah, who would have thought that? Resemblance to copper. Copper also is very, very useful metal, as we know. Uh, it is, in fact, in terms of uh, the amount of uh, the amount of metal used, copper is much more uh, utilized than silver. The only other metal that's used more in mass is steel or iron. Uh, amazing. But the so that is the similarity that it has with copper at high temperature in high temperature semiconductors and heavy atoms with unpaired electrons like Au2 plus show cool magnetic effects that have not seen in lighter ions. Halide perovskites possess really attractive properties for many everyday applications. So we have been looking to expand this family of materials, according to Kurt Lindquist, the lead author of the study who conducted the research as a Stanford doctoral student and is now a postdoctoral scholar in inorganic chemistry at Princeton University. An unprecedented AU2 plus perovskite could open some intriguing new avenues. Now that's pretty, I know there's a lot of science speak in this piece, but that's pretty amazing and remarkable when you think about, you know, how gold, a metal that's been around for thousands of years, gets a new discovery and really is rebooted in a sense with this material to provide AU2 plus. The, um, an, as an elemental metal, gold, has been valued for its relative scarcity, as well as its unmatched malleability and chemical inertness, which most of us know. It does not react to anything. It's easily shaped into jewelry, and it does not react with chemicals in the environment and tarnish over time. An additional key reason for its value is gold's namesake color. 
Arguably, no other metal in its pure state has such a distinctive hue. No question about that. Um, arguably, and, and that, that is pretty amazing. The fundamental physics behind gold, uh, gold's acclaimed appearance uh, it also explains why AU2 plus is so rare, uh, Karun Dasa explained. The root reason is relativistic effects. Originally postulated in Albert Einstein's famed theory of relativity, Einstein taught us that when objects move very, very fast and their velocity approaches a significant fraction of the speed of light, the object gets heavier. It's pretty amazing. The object will actually get heavier. We know how dense gold is. This is one reason why I have a challenge for th folks out there, even the most ardent silver stackers, to, to, uh, to buy a one full ounce of gold. And anybody can do it. Um, and uh, when you do that and hold it in your hand, there's nothing like it. A pure full ounce. In fact, this is a, an actual pure full ounce of gold. This actually weighs more than an ounce when you take into account its, uh, its alloys. But nonetheless, a full ounce of gold in your hand is, is uh, there's nothing like it. Nothing like feeling that weight of gold um, as you hold it. Pretty remarkable. The phenomenon applies to um, particles as well and has profound consequences for massive heavy elements such as gold, whose atomic nuclei boost a large number of protons. These particles collectively exert immense positive charge forcing negatively charged electrons to whirl around the nucleus at breakneck speeds. As a consequence, the electrons grow heavy and tightly surround the nucleus, blunting its charge and allowing outer electrons to drift farther uh, than in typical metals. This rearrangement of electrons and their energy levels leads to gold absorbing blue light. That's right, the light of blueness and that's why blue looks so good with, with gold. It complements perfectly here. And that, that absorbing blue light, therefore appearing yellow in our eyes. And that's what's happening. It's the absorption of blue light. And again, you know, I can't state how good gold looks with blue. A perfect contra uh, uh, you know, contrast there. Pretty amazing. That's why you see the, the color schemes of even, even some sports teams show blue or purple um, along with gold. Pretty remarkable. Because of the arrangement of gold's electrons, thanks to relativity, the atom naturally occurs as AU1 plus and AU3 plus, losing one of three electrons, respectively, and spurning AU2 plus. The two plus indicates a net positive charge from the loss of two negatively charged electrons. And the AU chemical symbol for gold hails from arum, which is a Latin word for gold. So that's how the name comes about here. Pretty amazing. Now, what about this other ingredient, this very common ingredient that's going to be used for this process? This is quite fascinating. With just the right molecular configuration, AU2 plus can endure, the Stanford researchers found. Lindquist said he stumbled upon the new AU2 plus harboring perovskite while working on a broader project centered on magnetic semiconductors for use in electronic devices. Lindquist mixed a salt called cesium chloride and AU3 plus chloride together in water and added hydrochloric acid to the solution with a little vitamin C thrown in. Yes, indeed. Who would have thought? Take your vitamins, folks. Vitamin C, which by the way, is an acid. Uh, the, the, in the ensuing reaction, vitamin C donates a negatively charged electron in the common AU3 plus forming AU2 plus. Intriguingly, AU2 plus is stable in the solid perovskite, but not in the solution. In the lab, we can take this material using very simple ingredients in about five minutes at room temperature, said Lindquist. We end up with a powder that's very dark green, nearly black, and is surprisingly heavy because of the gold it contains. Recognizing that it may, that they may have hit a new chemistry pay dirt, so to speak, Lindquist performed numerous tests on the perovskite, including spectroscopy and x-ray diffraction to investigate how it absorbs light and to characterize its crystal structure. Stanford research, research groups in physics and chemistry led by Young Lee, professor of applied physics and of photon science and Edward Solomon, 
um, at the Monroe E. Spalgut Professor of Chemistry and Professor of Photon Science, further contributed to studying the behavior of AU2+. The experiments ultimately bore out the presence of AU2+, in a perovskite and in the process added a chapter of century-old story of chemistry and physics involving Linus Pauling, who received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1954 and the Nobel Peace Prize in 1962. Earlier in his career, he worked on gold perovskites containing the common forms of AU1 plus and 3. Coincidentally, Pauling also later studied the structure of vitamin C, one of the ingredients required to yield a stable perovskite containing the elusive AU2+. That's pretty remarkable. And uh, looking ahead, the, the colleagues plan to study a new material further and tweak its chemistry. Yes, indeed. They can do that pretty remarkably. The hope is that the AU2 plus perovskite can be used in applications that require magnetism and conductivity as electrons hop from AU2 plus to 3 plus in the perovskite. And those two things, magnetism and conductivity, are the foundation and the root for all things in terms of, uh, of, of our devices and photovoltaics and a number of different applications. The sky is pretty much the limit with this heavy element grounded by gravity. Pretty amazing. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for watching and encourage you to please rate share, comment, and subscribe.